In fiction, there are a lot of different types of abilities that have no real life equivalent that can be used when we attempt to calculate them. I'm talking about things like the energy required to perform transmutation, the energy required to terraform the earth, and the topic of today's video, the science behind the creation and application of speed clones. The exact purpose of this particular type of video is to find, discover, and explain the science behind the many different abilities of fictional characters. Yeah, that's right, I have created, and will continue to create, real, actual formulas in order to calculate the things that fictional characters can do. Man, I am such a nerd. Hello Internet, Jojo here, Boom, baby! and welcome to Idea Shock. Today, we're talking about the science behind speed clones and the technique that is required to form them. I've been analyzing characters for several months, and from the very start, this is something that always bothered me. So I began to look into it, and after a lot of trial and error, I eventually found a formula that I believe will answer exactly that question. So without further ado, let's just get into it. The very first thing that we need to do is to define exactly what speed clones are and how they differ from other types of cloning abilities. The most famous clone creating ability is Naruto's Shadow Clones. These Shadow Clones are not anything like the clones that a character like Koro Sensei makes. Instead, Shadow Clone like abilities often grant the clones themselves physical structure that allows for them to make contact and strike an opponent. Now, as you might assume, that's a lot different than the speed clones that we're talking about here. With that said, let's get to the actual definition. The technical definition of a speed clone is that it is a clone that is completely formed by faster than sight movement and precise movement technique. Now, the formula that I've made is very new, and it might need to be modified over time in order for it to become more accurate. So if you have any questions about this after you watch the video, then tell me in the comments down below. But if you think this formula makes sense, then uh, I don't know, why not like the video or something? But with that out of the way, let's actually apply this to something and get into more detail. To start, there are at least three things that have to be taken into account when calculating speed from speed clones. The first thing that needs to be accounted for is the distance between all the clones. I mean, if two clones are five miles apart, then that's obviously a major factor and has to be accounted for. The second required thing is the number of clones being made. Also kind of obvious. The third and final thing required is the visual quality of the clones. Basically, it's how similar they look to the original. Also, now might be a good time to mention that the process of making speed clones is far more of a technique than just a byproduct of moving very fast. Let's put this into practice. At its most basic form, finding the speed of two high quality speed clones is actually super easy, barely an inconvenience. For this video, we are going to use this example and assume that these two clones are spaced evenly apart at a distance of 10 feet. The formula for finding two high quality speed clones is simply the distance between each of the clones multiplied by 3. Doing this, we get a total distance traveled of 30 feet. With this found, we now know the first of the three major things that we have to account for, the distance. For those of you who are wondering what the 3 multiplier is for, it's to account for the character moving from the first location to the second, back to the first, and then moving again to the second. Basically, this is because for the individual to make two speed clones, they need to be in both of the locations twice in 0 0.0045 of a second. The 3 multiplier itself also allows for more flexibility when we discuss the quality of the clones, but that comes later. The next thing we do is to plug the 30 foot distance into a speed calculator. With that distance in, we now have to use the time of 0 0.0045 of a second, as 0 0.0045 of a second is the time it takes for the human eye to register and track movement. With all the information plugged in, we can find that this individual is moving at 4,545 miles per hour, or roughly Mach 6. If that's confusing to any of you, you're not alone. It took me forever to wrap my head around this. Also, it's, it's just going to get more complicated from here on out. Moving up to three high quality clones, we have to measure the distance between all the clones relative to each other. So, clone 1 and 2 are 10 feet apart, clone 2 and 3 are also 10 feet apart, but then we need to factor the distance between clone 1 and 3. Doing that, we get a distance of 20 feet. 
plugging all these numbers into the formula and we get 10 plus 10 plus 20 times 3. So adding and multiplying all these together and we find the total distance that the individual moved faster than I can track is 120 feet. This new distance that we added on would raise the speed of the individual up to Mach 23 or 18,181 miles per hour. With three clones 10 feet apart calculated, we now can move on to four clones. For this, we will be using the distances between point 0.1 and 2, point 0.2 and 3, point 0.3 and 4, point 0.1 and 3, point 0.2 and 4, and point 0.1 and 4. Now, obviously the more clones the individual has, the exponentially faster they become. Using all these distances, we find to have this many clones at this distance apart, the individual would need to move 300 feet in 0.0045 of a second. This would bring the speed of this person up to 45,454 miles per hour, or Mach 59. Lastly, we got five clones. We will use all the previous distances, as well as adding the distance from point 1 to 5, 2 to 5, 3 to 5, and 4 to 5. Of course, when the fifth clone is added onto one of the extreme sides, it would double all the previous numbers by adding an extra 300 feet onto the total distance traveled. This new distance that we add would raise the speed of the individual to over Mach 118. Now that this formula has been explained in more detail, let's talk about why certain numbers were used in this calculation. When it comes to distance traveled, we have to measure and use the distances between every speed clone that was created and every other speed clone. As I said before, the actual clone image itself is formed by the character being in the same place multiple times in the set 0.0045 of a second. The 3 times multiplier is what we should use for clones that are completely indistinguishable from the original, or what I've been calling high definition clones. For lower quality clones like Koro Sensei's or Saitama's clones, it is best to use the 2.5 multiplier. We're doing this because the facial features of the clones are still distinguishable, but it's pretty obvious that they're still clones. Now, when talking about clones that have no distinguishable features, like the clones from the CW's Flash, we would need to use a multiplier of 2 times. This is because this type of clone is definitely the least impressive of all three. With the formula explained in detail, now is the time for the Q&A section. Even though no one asks any questions yet. Anyways, the questions that I'm going to discuss are some of the questions that I had and I wanted the answers to, and so maybe they'll answer some of your questions. Now, obviously you can leave any questions that you have in the comment section, and if we get enough questions I might address them in another video. But we'll see how many questions there actually are. Anyways, let's start with question 1. How many clones would any given character need to form in order for them to be faster than light? That is a simple question with a simple answer. And that answer is impossible to know. That's not to say you can't reach light speed by using this formula, but the one factor that actually matters is the total distance traveled in 0.0045 of a second. The exact distance that must be traveled in order to reach light speed while using this formula is 838.25 miles, or roughly one eighth of the circumference of the moon. How can this be applied in combat? The answer to that is rather simple. Unless it is explicitly stated, any demonstration of speed clones should be considered combat speed. This is due to the fact that the individual would need to be able to see, change direction, and maneuver almost instantly at that speed, as well as be able to perceive at that speed. If two characters can both move at the same speed, but one of them uses clones while the other uses a straight line, is there a difference in combat? Yes. If the two characters are truly the same speed, then the individual who uses speed clones should have an advantage. This is due to the fact that the person has shown that they can maneuver better while at that speed. Last question. Is Koro Sensei faster than Mach 20? Yes. Easily. In the anime episode Baseball Time, Koro Sensei moves from deep within the forest to the tool shed and back out to the students faster than they can see. Top of the morning to ya! <laughs> this feat would put him easily over Mach 20. And this is not even using the speed clone formula. Now, this entire formula was created for a fictitious ability, so it's going to be almost impossible to know if it actually works in real life. Basically, this means that this formula will definitely need to be modified in order to become more accurate the further on we go. With all that said, that's really all I have for this video. I mean, I have nothing else to discuss. If you like this type of science video, then comment on what specific ability that you want me to cover next. 
It doesn't even have to be restricted to fiction. If you want a video on the science of speed or the science of explosion energy, then comment it. Maybe I'll do it. It depends on how well this video does. Now, I do have a few ideas on what specific topics that I might want to do a science video on. Topics like transmutation, hockey, and, you know, energy produced from lightsabers. Topics like that. Anyways, with that said, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Remember to stay spectacular. JoJo, out.